Hi kids, it's Reverend James here at Children's Time. Ho hope you're all doing well. Today is the fifth Sunday of Lent, which means that next Sunday is Palm Sunday, where we remember Jesus entering Jerusalem and everyone was waving palm branches saying, Hosanna, praise to the son of David. And then the Sunday after that, of course, is Easter. And so we're already getting ready and excited for Easter and the celebration of Jesus' resurrection. As we approach Easter, we're starting to already try to understand what Easter means, what resurrection means, what it means that Jesus died and rose again. And today in the Gospel today, Jesus tells his disciples, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. So why would he be talking about this? What is this? What is he trying to get at here? Well, I have some some items here that often sometimes we put in the garbage, but we know, you know, I know that recycling is really important. Whenever there's something that we can recycle, we should recycle it. So plastic, cardboard, glass, uh, aluminum, all the different things that we can keep out of landfills and they can be used for something else. And it's not just recycling, a lot of things can be repurposed for something else. So take for example, um, an old teapot. This isn't exactly old, but if this had like cracks in it or chips or something like that, you could turn it into a planter. You could put a, a beautiful plant in here, repurposing it, right? Of course, newspaper can be recycled into all sorts of different stuff. You can actually reuse newspaper as, as wrapping paper. You can use it for paper mache and crafts, all kinds of stuff. Uh, glass, of course, is can be recycled and made into more glass stuff. You can use it as a, a vase if you want. You could decorate this, put a flower in. Again, the point, trying to, point I'm trying to make is Things that we think of as perhaps garbage or, or dead in a way aren't necessarily so. They can be brought to a new life. And I just want to show you two examples of this at uh, a friend of mine's house, uh, Norman Nan two friends of mine, Norman and Nancy Dick. They're from Sanford United <clears throat> and in their house they have a couple interesting features that they've taken something that was kind of considered sort of um, no longer useful and they turned it into something that had a new use. So pennies. Pennies we don't really use very much. We don't even get them as change. Some of you may not even really remember ever using pennies. But if you take a look at this, Norman and Nancy <clears throat> have used pennies to make a floor in their house. Isn't that amazing? And it's so beautiful too. Or Glass bottles. Glass bottles we generally recycle, but if you take a look here, they've used them to make this beautiful mural in their yard, just outside their house. So Jesus used a seed as a symbol of trying to explain the resurrection to his disciples. That just like a seed, which looks like nothing at all, it looks dead, it looks like a rock, but if we plant it in the ground and water it, and it's warm and it gets sunshine, it'll burst forth into a plant. Wheat, canola, a tree, apple tree, grass, whatever it is. It's sort of miraculous when you, when you really think about it. This thing that appears dead comes to life and produces that much more. And that's what Jesus' resurrection is about in dying and being placed in the tomb. Jesus appears to have gone. But in Easter, he rises again and is everywhere, is in our hearts, in our, in our communities, is part of our world in a, an, an amazing way. I just wanted to show you some, <clears throat> some symbols that often go along with Easter and resurrection. So you have here wheat, which recalls Jesus' story about new life coming from death. You have the butterfly, which is a powerful symbol of resurrection because the caterpillar eats its leaves and it goes into a cocoon. And again, it, it appears to die in a way, but just a few days or weeks later, a beautiful butterfly emerges. 
We have the a chicken and egg. Can an egg, it, it appears dead. It's like, is there anything in there? And after a few weeks of incubation, uh, a new baby chick is born out of the egg. We have the tulip, which is a spring flower, symbol of new life. We have the lily, which grows from a bulb. Certain flowers have, have bulbs that are planted in the earth. And again, they, they sort of seem dead, like they don't have anything to them. But each spring, the bulbs burst forth with flowers. So lilies and daffodils and tulips. We have the rising sun, remembering that each new day is a new beginning, a new beginning of, of life and a resurrection. We have these Greek letters, which is alpha and omega. In the Greek alphabet, alpha is the first letter, like ours, A, and omega is the last letter. For us, it's Z. So it sort of is a, a symbol of how Jesus is the end and the beginning, that even in death, Nothing ends. It's just a new beginning to a new life. And of course, we have the cross, which is a symbol of Jesus' death and resurrection, and the empty tomb, which was on Easter Day. So if you'd like for a, a craft today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some color and decorations to these symbols, and then I'm going to cut them out with, en with enough space around them enough blank space so I can punch a hole in the top and put a string through it. And I can put these decorations on a plant that I have indoors. I could go get a, a branch from outside and hang it on the branch, or I could hang it on a tree outside to remember that Easter is coming, that Jesus brings new life in the resurrection. So those symbols are available on our website under Children's Resources. And if you, if you make an Easter tree with the decorations, make sure you send some pictures. Don't forget about our Lenten coin boxes. We're still collecting money for mission and service to help out uh, people around the world. And we'll end our time today by praying together the Lord's Prayer with our actions. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Okay, have a great week, everyone. Take care. Bye.